Henry of Mowers and Blowers. Good morning. It's uh, Tuesday? Yeah. It's my carcass of crap. A free carcass that I got from my friend Nick from Medford. It came without an engine. I put four wheels on there that hold air. Um, I repainted it after scraping off all the rust. I put an engine on there. It's my smoky engine, the one that I changed the piston on. I wanted to see whether or not it would smoke. I guess I did the piston and rings correctly because it no longer smokes. It's a 21 horsepower Intec engine that I put in there. And uh, as you guys saw from my past six episodes, I believe, this is episode number seven. Can you believe I spent seven episodes working on this carcass of crap? But... You know, as it went along, I didn't think it would end up looking like this, because it really was a piece of crap, you know? Uh, everything appears to work, you know, it runs, it drives, and it mows. Well, at least I think it mows. We placed the drive belt on this thing, and I, I haven't taken it out for a ride, but in the garage I went forward and backwards, and it seems like it's goes pretty fast, actually. Um... When I did try out the PTO the other day, after I uh, replaced the uh, blades on this thing, right, I didn't have two of the exact blades. I had two different kinds of blades. They were both about the same length. So when I tried it yesterday, it vibrates. Uh, so unfortunately, I have to take this deck off again. I know, it's a, it's a pain to take off this deck. But I have to do it because I want to see whether or not the spindles might be bent, because that would be the cause of a, a bigger vibration, you know, not just the different blades. I mean, yes, the different blades would cause it because they're both of unequal weight, you know, but uh, still, if one is turning, the other one's turning, they're both different weight, it shouldn't cause the vibration, you know what I mean? If one of the blades were bent, then it would cause a vibration. So I'm thinking maybe the spindle might be bent given what it looked like when I got it, the blades were all like that, you know? So this, whatever, this guy hits up, hit the curb really bad, both of them, you know, and bent the blades like crazy, you know? So I'm thinking with that, maybe, maybe the spindles are bent. But I won't, I really can't tell from here, so I have to take it off again. Uh, while Troy Build probably designed this, for the intention of making it the easiest deck removal ever, right? It's terrible. Because the middle idler pulleys for the deck is attached to the steering column of this tractor. So you literally have to just disconnect the joints here. It's two pullouts in the back for the back hangers. You release one wire that's connected to the PTO lever and a hanger in the front that just hangs on both of them. So, I mean, ideally, it, it does sound like it's easy to remove, but trust me, it's not. Because once you do get it loose from the tractor, you got to lift this up a little bit for the spindles to clear that assembly of the deck pulleys, you know? So, uh, as you saw, I also changed the battery as well as put a cup cadet seat on it because it was in better condition. Um, I mean, I've done a lot to this tractor, as you guys have seen. And uh, so I'm going to get started on uh, taking that deck off and see what we have in terms of whether or not maybe the spindles are bent. And if they are, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. But since this started to look so good, and as you know, when I got it, I was missing the uh, left hood panel on this thing. So guess what? That's right. I decided to dig deep. And you, you guys know how I hate to dig deep. Money out of my pocket doesn't make me feel good. I don't think it makes anybody feel good, but all in all, though, I mean, I'm, I'm in this thing for like maybe $75. 50 bucks on getting that engine running again, right? And uh, I spent 10 bucks on a, a drive belt, tax and all that stuff. It's about, oh, also the battery. I forgot the battery. Battery was $21. So I'm, I'm, I'm in it almost 100 bucks. you know what I'm saying? So, you know, whatever. Uh, I bought, uh, I saw like maybe five of these on eBay panel. I mean, they range from 
I mean, up to like $150. I mean, who the hell's gonna pay $150 for the panel? It's ridiculous, you know? Some people charge like 70 bucks on shipping. I mean, I know it's a big piece and I know it's metal and I know it's an irregular size, but a hundred bucks for shipping? What are you, out of your brain? Nobody's gonna buy your thing. Anyway, so I found this one dude, he had it for like uh, 12 bucks for the panel, but uh, 20 something for shipping. So I made an offer of uh, eight bucks, whatever. It came out to 30 bucks plus change. And uh, so it ended up to be like $32, $33, something for the panel. So I just, I just bought it because look, I, this truck is almost finished, you know? The only way I can really finish it is if I had the panel. So I just went and bought the panel. What's kind of worrying me though is uh, Robert Nighthawk, my, uh, one of my subscribers, he uh, told me that that fuel filter looks strange. And uh, honestly, when you're looking at it here, when I put the panel on, right? Won't it hit that fuel filter? Uh, the oil filter? Maybe the panel won't even go on. Unless it bubbles out enough that it clears it. I don't know. Will it? Oh, maybe it will. If not, what should I do? Should I, should I cut a hole into the panel to accommodate the, the oil filter? Or do I take the oil filter out and find one that's half the size? You know what I mean? Or do I just take the oil filter out and plug it so that there is no oil filter? Hey! Come on, you guys know some of these engines don't have oil filters. A lot of them don't. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to take this deck off. Huh. Well... That was weird, huh? According to my time lapse, I took off the deck in eight seconds. In reality, it was really like five minutes. Well, I mean, I guess uh, once you know how to take it off, it's easier, you know? But uh, that was pretty easy, I will admit, you know? Uh, look at the split, you know? Anyway, so uh, I'm gonna put this up now. Let's check out the spindles and see if they're bent. So I got a bungee cord to uh, hold the brake together so that this thing free spins. Doesn't look bent to me. At least this spindle doesn't look bent. That looks okay to me too. How about you guys? Hard to realize, of course. But let's see. If you're looking at this blade, I'm going to put my finger here. I'm not going to spin it hard and cut my finger off. And let's see, does it go there also? No, it doesn't. See? It's a ha this part here is a half inch higher than this one. So if my finger's there, and that's where the tip is, right? This blade is crooked. See? This blade here is a half inch higher than this one, which will cause a vibration. Let's test this one here. I'll put my finger right there. That's where that tip is. That 
it's about right, but it's it's off by about a millimeter and a half. Yeah. So this blade here is a little crooked too. So I'll have to find some blades just to see that uh, you know some better blades. Make sure we don't have that kind of discrepancy. I'm going to remove this blade. Let's see if this works. This is a 15 16 half inch with an adapter onto a 3 8. Nope. And I have to get the half inch electric impact out. Let's try this one. So another thing is, um, it's not sitting perfectly on here. Why? Because this is a six star type, uh, six star type of uh, mate, and I put a five star thing, so it's really not sitting correctly. Which is the re you know that's the reason why it's, it's off a little bit because it's not sitting correctly because this is a six star. I don't have a six star one. If I put a washer big enough to take that six star thing away, it would be flat, you know? Of course, if I put a washer there, that might do it. Let's just, let's just give that a try. Got a washer that's on top of the six star mold, right? I'm gonna put my finger here again and see if it makes a difference. So maybe I put it on when it just wasn't right, you know? So right there. Ooh! But then this is a little bit lower. So. As long as it's balanced, my finger's here. Event. But this was off by more than an inch, though. Maybe if I get a better washer. Maybe if I grind the six stars away. No. Anyway, I'm going to work on this. So I got a washer on top of the six star thing. And this blade I got from the back. It seems straighter than any one. Watch this. I just put it on. Put my finger right here. You can kind of touch it right there, okay? So it's touching right there. Perfect. It's exactly the same. You can hear it might hit, hit my fingers. But this is good, I think. on this one. So check this out. So I didn't pay attention obviously the first time I messed with this, right? But somebody had has grinded out the six star thing. See? So there's no six star thing there. So that means this is gonna be like a three fourths of a millimeter lower than that one, right? Because that one has the three uh, six star thing. I put a washer on top of it. So if I just put a washer thick enough to compensate for the missing six star thing, it'll be as flat as that. That's what I'm gonna try. So I put two big washers that are oversized over the parts where it's not that smooth. And then I impacted it in there, okay? Check this out. I want to make sure you guys can see. Yeah. Okay. Put my finger right there. It's just slightly touching.
It's exactly there. It's awesome. Maybe, maybe a slight difference. This is touching. This is almost touching. So it's off by a little. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, as long as I have it off, well, I don't have it off now, but it's easy to take it off. I'm going to sharpen them. So I've got a block of wood here. I'm just going to step on it here like that. I'm going to use my grinder. I got this grinder uh, as a gift from uh, one of my subscribers. Subscriber Sam. Samuel Sandoval. Thank you very much. It's the first time I'm using it. I didn't go and buy that thing. I just put a washer in there that, that looked like it fit. And I just basically grabbed this and took channel locks and tightened it. You know, that's good enough, you know. See, Sam? Works just fine. This is my dedicated grinder. It's good enough. Not going to take too much off, even though this is... Actually, this could be rounded up. This is too rounded off. Here's good, but that's just too dead. I'm going to have to sharpen that a little bit more. Ooh, much better. This is the part that actually cuts the most. Listen, I don't really give too much stock to the sharpening blades because, as you guys all know, and I know you know this in the back of your mind, right? You'll sharpen these, right? And they'll be so sharp. You go and run your machine for 15 minutes. If you touch it again, I'm telling you right now, it's not sharp anymore. So you're sharpening blades for 15, for 15 minutes of a good cut. Seriously, they don't last. Uh, but if it's really, really bad shape, you need one of these. You know, I need to do one of these. I'm going to do uh, the rest of the three edges. This blade here is a little bit newer, and it really didn't need so much sharpening, but just a little bit of going over, man. Really sharp. Especially here. Damn. Here too. Very sharp. Like I get, like I said again, um, short-lived. It's really sharp right now. The minute you mow 15 minutes, it'll be dull again. So I think I'm tuning this pretty good. Uh, I'm going to use this washer. I'm just going to put it right there so it just slightly touches. Right there. So watch. So I want it to touch so you can hear go. This one doesn't spin as good as that one, but um, 
they seem to be well balanced now um, and sharpened as you saw when I took it off before that was off by about a half an inch this was off by about uh, two-thirds of an inch one was completely you know an half an inch higher and that was lower so that that's what caused the vibration uh, I don't see how this could you know have a big noticeable difference I mean it's still gonna vibrate no matter what you know it's a lawnmower you know what I mean not gonna have it I mean although I have had lawnmowers that are so smooth that you know you know the blades are in perfect shape you know but you nick something you hit something whatever you bend it something that takes it off kilter that's what, that's what happens man look at look at how precise that is man the difference between these two touching is like a little more than seven meters but I think I got it uh, together you know blades are straight um, they match up at the same place so I think that'll be good it's on tight and sharpened so I'm just gonna put it back to peck on again and give her a try let's see if it takes me eight seconds to put it on So, it took me a little longer, it took me 12 seconds, time lapse. You know, when I was under here, you know what I noticed? I noticed there was this yellow wire here. I remember me doing this for my uh, friend Andy in Jericho, who has the same exact one. I helped him go buy it about a year and a half ago. And so we did some research on it. He was tired of uh, always disengaging the PTO or it would stall if he wants to re uh, mow in reverse. So while I don't have an RIO button on my thing, I think maybe because it stalled that time because I had it in reverse maybe and it wouldn't let me mow. So I just pulled this out because I remember that's exactly what I did with uh, his. I just pulled it out and now he can mow in reverse. It was that easy to do. I'm just going to tuck this away somewhere and maybe that will be the reason why... Um, you know, it stalled that day, but I, I don't want the reverse RIO thing engaged anyway. So it was, uh, I gotta tell you, it was pretty easy to put the deck on. <laughs> I guess when you, the deck hasn't been removed in a long time, it's more difficult because of the rust, you know? But how about that, huh? This is starting to look like a pretty decent looking tractor. Traptor! So I'm gonna, <laughs> I guess I'm gonna try it. Of course I'm not gonna try it with the drop drop there. The nut be so much in so much trouble if I suck this up in there. You know what I mean? You guys know. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'm always nervous about it. I'm just going to start it. Choke.
vibrates, as you can tell. Maybe I should go take it for a ride, huh? Honestly, it still vibrates. <laughs> I can't figure it out. The spindles do not seem to be bent, although uh, minuscule amounts could make the difference, especially when they're turning at such high RPMs. Um, we saw that we balanced the blades, and it doesn't look like that they were out of whack or anything, but you never can tell. They're not new blades. They were used blades, even though they looked uh, like they were in good condition from the naked eye. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't plan on, you know, doing any kind of selling lawnmowers this time of year. So this is more than likely going to go in the backyard once I receive this uh, left side hood panel. It would be complete. I would have, uh, this, this would be ready to go. However, the smoky engine still kind of smokes a little, huh? Um, it's funny, you didn't see this uh, off camera, but um, I actually tried to drive this over this big curb because I couldn't get it in between the cars, right? And it got stuck. So then I looked down to, shut, to try to shut down the engine, right? And the key, the key just flies out, you know? I couldn't find where the key was, you know? So I tried to choke it and then down and then choke it again and try to shut off the engine and it wouldn't shut off, you know? I was got to walk around and look for the key, you know? Like looking for a needle in a haystack, you know? Just find a little small key somewhere that I drove? I have no idea. Um... So finally, I just turned the fuel shutoff off, and uh, it eventually stopped. But um, I had to lift it over the curb and push it into the garage, whatever, uh, actually the driveway, and I drove it back in here. It smokes a little. Uh, it looks like the smoke is, um, the vapors are coming out of the uh, breather hose, which is an indication of what? That's right. Probably the uh, a blown head gasket. But I really don't think so, you know? Uh, anyway, uh, I'm not in any hurry to, you know, get rid of this thing. I mean, I am, but uh, I don't know. Still has some issues, you know. Got to figure out why that uh, mower deck still vibrates. You know, I guess I could try some new blades, but then I have to go buy some new blades. Haven't I sunk enough money into this damn thing already? It's going to turn into a money pit, you know, which I don't want it to be. Um, but you know what? It looks pretty good now, huh? Compared to what it looked like before. Uh, so it drives. It starts, runs, drives, mows. Sort of. But uh, this is a long episode, man. I, I, I'm ready to move on to something else, you know. Uh, I've got another LT1000 tractor in the backyard, and all I need to do is put that together again. It's got an engine. It's not mounted. I need to get a carb whole bunch of stuff to get that going. The deck is sitting right over here. It's got a hole in the deck, you know. But then uh, I have a lot of other things I got to do too. Um, I got to put a couple of uh, quantum engines on two lawnmowers that smoke, that have quantum engines that smoke, including that John Deere JS63. I mean, it runs great and everything, you know, don't get me wrong. But uh, it kind of smokes sometimes, you know, as you're running it and then you go, like when you're moving, 
some puffs of smoke come out. So I have a feeling the piston rings and the uh, uh, cylinder wall are slightly scored that it leaks a little bit of uh, oil out. Um, I guess if I did an oil change with better oil, maybe that might fix the problem. Maybe I'll try that first. And then there's a push mower that smokes too. And I have three quantum engines just sitting there. Uh, I know one of them runs. I don't know about the other two, but you know that's probably what I'd like to do um, next. And then uh, I also have a chainsaw that I'd like to get going, and also a Troy built weed whacker that you guys saw that I got. So I've got you know probably six or seven things that I need need to get going. It's not quite cold enough yet because I still could still sell some lawnmowers, but I would like to drain all the gas out of all the lawnmowers that I have, or at least run them out, you know, and then get ready to store them into my shed. Whereas that day, I will also take all my snowblowers out of my shed and put them in the garage. But uh, we're not quite there yet. We haven't had any threats of uh, some major accumulations yet, so we're not quite there yet. Yeah, I know. You choose a nice day to do all that, so you don't have to do all that stuff when it's freezing cold and snowing, right? Yeah, that's probably true. But then again, if I winterize my, my uh, lawn mowers and then somebody wants to buy one, I'm going to whip it out of that shed. I could stack it three, four deep, you know, and a pain that would be, you know. But anyway, that's my video today. I'm glad you guys came and joined me. I don't know how much really, really got accomplished other than the fact that you saw me driving it around. But uh, I guess this video can be called How to Remove and Replace Your Deck and uh, sharpen your blades and try to balance them, you know? I mean, that, it did show that, but uh, <laughs> I don't know what kind of success I really had, you know? But uh, it gives you an idea about how to do it and, and um, you know, whether or not it'll work or not. But in my case, it, it really didn't work that much, and it still vibrates. As a matter of fact, I don't really see a, um, an improvement in the vibration. It still vibrates pretty well. If you guys have any uh, thoughts about it, let me know, because as you guys saw, spindle didn't appear to be bent. Um, I guess if I got two blades that had the six star thing, that, that might work. Um, but remember, one of the spindles doesn't have the six star. The guy grounded it out, you know. So, you know, it's tricky working with a machine that somebody else has messed with before, you know, jigged it and rigged it. But, uh, you know. From nothing, this is this looks pretty good though. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel, buy a sticker. Also follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, mowersblowers.com. See you guys on my next project. Have a great day.